for three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Green. I want to start by my testimony by thanking you for holding today's hearing, for soliciting input from members on how to continue to combat this growing epidemic. As a pharmacist, I've always made it a priority to advise and assist my patients with the medications they are prescribed. As a community pharmacist, I developed close bonds with people who were often my friends and neighbors. That bond pushes pharmacists to always act proactively in helping their patients. One of the largest concerns I've seen is the increased prescribing of opioids for pain relief. We need to look at other options and other outlets for the treatment of pain and find a good medium. I believe we can work with the FDA to prioritize non-opioid treatments for patients and create a channel for the approval of those therapies. In addition, as it currently stands, prescribers are able to write up to three 30-day prescriptions for Schedule II drugs for patients. I believe it would be pertinent to re-examine that prescribing structure and look at the effectiveness of allowing fewer initial prescriptions and a limited number of refills rather than three months of prescriptions. Similar to that notion, allowing pharmacists to have a greater say in limiting the number of pills filled in a prescription could help to address the transition to addiction. For instance, limiting the fill for acute pain needs such as a dental procedure could help prevent an individual from getting hooked on opioids. Under CARA, a pharmacist is only able to partially fill a prescription with the consent of the patient or prescriber or in the instance it doesn't have enough stock to fully fill a prescription. A simple seven-day fill could cover their pain needs and keep more pills out of a potential use or circulation. Prescription drug monitoring programs, PDMPs, are a great resource in combating the prescription drug abuse, but they can be strengthened to better curb this epidemic. One way to do so is to better align the data, including PDMPs, so that states can collaborate to create a more comprehensive picture of people's drug use, further linking state PDMPs, and including data and workflows could allow for more accuracy in how states monitor and respond to potential abuses. Drug take-back programs continue to expand across the country. Currently, at least 19 states have some form of drug take-back take programs, and 23 states have programs allowing pharmacists to accept unused and unwanted drugs. One of the most common ways in which adolescents access prescription drugs is through the drug cabinets of their parents and grandparents. Too often, these unused pills can act as a gateway to further abuse by young adults. Expanding these programs through law enforcement pharmacies or paid-for mail programs can take some of these prescription drugs off the street. The creation of middle grounds of therapies will provide for alternatives that are missing in today's market. By facilitating research and development, we can help drive the expensive and time-consuming efforts needed to make those treatments a reality. Currently, there are a few options left between Tylenol, Tramadol, and opioids, and that void is driving prescription decisions across the country. So thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee, for the opportunity to provide testimony here today, and I look forward to working with everyone to 